Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, aka The Diligent Dev, and welcome to part one of a two-part series where I'm gonna be covering some of the more popular Vue.js form validation packages. In particular, and in this video, we're gonna be covering vValidate, and in my next video, we're gonna be covering Vulidate. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so here we are over at the computer, and what I've done is I've created a view project using NPX and a view CLI. If you don't know how to create a view project using those, I will go ahead and link a video on the screen right now showing you how to do so. Once the project was created, I went ahead and removed everything from our app div that you see right here. Then I went to the components folder and deleted the hello world components, deleted the import for hello world, and deleted hello world out of our component registration. Next, I created a vValidate form. I went ahead and imported it into app.view, registered as a component, and put it inside of our app div. Then I went over and grabbed the bootstrap CDN and imported it here down in our style tag, gave a class of container and margin top to our app div to give it a little bit of styling. So if we head over to our vValidate form component, you'll see that all we have in here is an H2 with vValidate form. After all that was done, I opened up a new terminal and ran npm run serve to get a development server up, and then I navigated to localhost 8080. Now what we're concerned about right now is getting vValidate into our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to their documentation, and we're gonna click on get started, and then we'll go up here to overview, and we want to install it in our project. There are a variety of different ways you can install it, but I'm gonna be using npm, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this here. We're gonna head back. I'm gonna open up a new terminal, paste that in, and once that's done, I will be right back. And now that the vValidate package has installed, let's go ahead and head back over to their documentation and see how we can use it. Let's go down here to guide and go to basics. And you'll see that the first thing we need to do is register a validation provider. And this is a component that acts as a validator for your fields. And if we scroll down, we can see we can import it into a specific view file, or we can import it globally as you see down here. Now there's a very specific way that I want to register this component globally in our project. And in order to show you why I wanna do it that way, let's head down to available rules. Now you'll see that we can go ahead and import the validation provider, but then we're also going to have to import the extend method and also import all the rules. And there is a way to install all of the rules. You'll see that they also have this version down here, which we import extend, then we import all the rules. We loop through the object key of the rules and we go ahead and extend the rules. But what I wanna do is import the full bundle. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this right here and we're going to head back to our project. We're going to go to src main.js and then right here at the top, I'm gonna to go ahead and import validation provider. And now that we have it imported, we can come right below and we can just say view.components and then we can go ahead and copy this validation provider because I want to name it exactly the same and then we'll specify that we want the validation provider component used globally as the validation provider. Now what we're particularly interested in validating are forms. So let's head back over to their documentation and let's go to handling forms. Now what I wanna do is validate before submit. So we'll scroll down here and we'll see that validating forms before submit is a must for form validation. The validation observer offers a handle submit function that you can use to protect your form submissions. This handle submit function accepts a submit handler and will only execute the handler once the user submits a valid form. So let's go ahead and click on this code icon and see what they're talking about. And you'll see that they have a form here, but the form is wrapped in a validation observer. And inside of our form, we have our validation providers that the validation observer will look at and then determine whether or not the form is valid. You'll see that there's a V slot for the handle submit function that they talked about. And all you have to do is wrap your form submit in this handle submit and then your function that you're actually gonna fire when the form submits. So let's go ahead and head back to our project. And inside of our main.js, we're going to say imports from vValidate. And what we're going to import is the validation observer. And then what we're gonna do is register it as a global component. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this line. We're gonna come up here and copy validation observer and just paste it in there. So we'll register a global component called validation observer that references our validation observer that we imported from vValidate. 
I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit and we will go ahead and save everything. And now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and head over to our vValidate form component and start coding out our form. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is set up some variables for our form field. So we're going to come down to export default and we'll create a data property. And for our form fields, we're going to have a name, email, password, gender, and accept terms. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna wrap this in form data. And we'll go ahead and put that all inside of form data. Then up here at the top, we can start coding out the template. Now you'll remember from the documentation, we need to wrap our form in a validation observer. So we're gonna say validation observer and we'll give it a V slot equal to curly braces. We've got to wrap this in quotes, handle, submit. And we'll go ahead and close this. And then inside of our validation observer, we're going to have our form and we will bind to the submit property on the form and we'll say submit.prevent so it prevents the default behavior of reloading the page and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that handle submit that we put on the v slot of the validation observer and put it in here and then also pass in an on submit and we will take this on submit and that's what's going to handle our form submission so we'll come down here to export default and we'll make a methods property. We'll do our on submit. And when we submit the form, we're just going to console log our form data. This dot form data. And then up in our form, for each one of our inputs, we're going to have to wrap it in a validation provider. So we'll say validation provider. We will give it a name equal to our input name. Rules on this will be required. We'll do a pipe and say alpha, since we do not want any numbers in someone's name. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down so we can get a better look at this. And then we'll say vslot and set that equal to errors. We will close our validation provider. And then inside of our validation provider is where we'll put our form input. And I actually have to wrap this in quotes. And there we go. So I'm gonna be using some bootstrap CSS classes. So in here, we're gonna have a div of form group. We'll give it a label equal to name. I'll just go ahead and get rid of this four for now. And then we'll give it an input. Type will be text. Class will be form control. And V model will be name. Below it, we'll put a span. Inside of the span, we'll do some text interpolation. And what we're going to do is emit the first error if there is one. So we'll say errors. And errors is an array. And we'll just pick the first error out of that array. And we'll hit save. And we see now we have our name input field on the screen. Below that, we'll have our email input. So what I'm going to do, since it's very similar to this one, and we don't have to type it all out, is I'm just gonna copy this validation provider and paste it in here. We're going to change the name to email. And then the rules are gonna be required, but the other rule we're gonna have instead of alpha will be email, so it validates the email. We'll change the label to email. We'll come down to the input and change the type to email. And then we'll change the V model to email as well. And we'll hit save. And you'll see now we have our email field. And you'll see right now, if we go inside of one of these fields and leave, you'll see that name is required. And then if we leave, it'll say email is required. And what we can do is type in just some random text and you'll see it's not a valid email until we put what looks like a valid domain on the end. And since our password field is going to look very similar to our email, we're just going to go ahead and copy this out and paste it below. We will change the name to password. 
we will change the rules to require. We're going to give it a max. So max characters of 12. And then we're also gonna set a min, mix char min character of six. We'll go down and change the label to password. We will change the input type to password. And we will change the vModel to password. I'm gonna go ahead and save everything. And you'll see now we have our password field. If we enter it and leave it, you'll see that it's required. And also if we add a password, it's saying it must be at least six characters long. And once we hit six characters, if we go over 12, then it says password field may not be greater than 12 characters. And now let's go ahead and create our gender field. So we'll go ahead and copy this validation provider and paste it below. We're going to change the name to gender. We are just going to make it required and we're not going to have an input. We're going to have a select. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our inputs. We'll do a select and we'll give it a class equal to form control. And we'll go inside of it and give it some options. We'll say the value on this one is male and the option text will be mail. We'll go ahead and copy this and paste this a couple times. We'll say female. And other. We'll give the select a V model of gender. And we'll go ahead and save everything. We also need to update our label to gender. So let's go ahead and save again. And you'll see now we have our gender dropdown and we have our options inside of there. Next, we'll create our checkbox for accepting the term. So I'll go ahead and copy this validation provider and paste it below. We'll get rid of everything inside of here. Instead of a form group, this will be a form check. We'll make an input. We'll give it a type of checkbox and a class equal to form check input. And we'll give it a V model equal to accept terms. Below that, we will do a label. We'll give it a class of form check label. We'll give it some text of accept terms. And I'll just go ahead and copy the span from above and we'll go ahead and paste it right below this div and we'll hit save. The last thing we need is a button to submit our form. So below our validation provider here, we're gonna do another input. We'll give it a type of submit. We'll give it a class of BTN, BTN primary. And we'll give it some text equal to submit. Go ahead and save that. And we'll go ahead and give it a little margin top. It's not looking too great right now against that checkbox. And there we go. So if I go ahead and hit this submit button without filling out any of these fields, we should get an error on each one. And you'll see that name is required, email is required, password. And it looks like we missed the name for this one. So I'm just gonna go up here and hit accept terms and save that. And we'll go ahead and hit submit again. And you'll see now that the accept terms field is required and it's not looking great. So what I'm gonna do is just on the span, put a BR. And now it's looking better. So if we go ahead and test this out, we'll see that the form validation start to disappear as we enter stuff in there. Com, we'll put a password in pick a gender and accept terms. And then when we submit, if we open up the console, well, it looks like we're getting some errors here on our V model. And it's because I wrapped this in form data. So let's go ahead and update our V model very quickly. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and save this. I'll fill this out really quickly. We'll go ahead and open up our console. We'll clear this out and we'll hit submit. 
And you'll see now that all of our values are in there and everything is looking good as far as validation and our form submission is concerned. And that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this tutorial. In my next tutorial, I'll be covering another view validation package called Viewlidate. And if you don't wanna miss that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and enable your notifications. If you got any value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It helps me out and my channel with the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.